The production trick I'm gonna show in this video is literally used on almost every single production I've been working on recently. And it is so simple, like literally so simple that it's probably something you already know about, but the question isn't do you know about it, the question is are you actually using it to its fullest capacity? That's the real question. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you multiple ways that you can use it. You might not already even know what it is, but I'm gonna show you multiple ways you can use it. And in this particular track that I've got pulled up here, I'm gonna be showing you how I actually use this literally all over the place, okay? So what I wanna do first and foremost is show you a little bit of a section of this track and uh, and see if you can actually hear what it actually is. I'm gonna go and turn this vocal on because I do want you to hear some context here. So let me just start at the very beginning. I want you to be really paying attention to the electric guitar. Here we go. See if you can see if you can hear what happens. Growing up here in paradise. Okay, so that's all I'll play. Can you catch what it was? Did you did you hear what it is? Because it might seem subtle, but it's actually not subtle. So let me just go ahead and solo out this guitar, okay? Uh, this these two here, and we're gonna go ahead and see if you can hear what it is. Let's start. Let's start one bar back. Here we go. So by now, I'm guessing you can probably hear what it is. And by the way, if you're not using headphones or monitors, it's gonna be a little bit harder to hear this stuff, but it's very simple. All I'm doing is using a low pass filter right here. So I'm basically shaving everything below about a thousand Hertz. And so when I have it originally happening, you're getting the full tone of the guitar here, right here, right? But then notice the tone of the guitar here. It starts to feel like it's actually underwater. So this is what's called a low pass filter. I'm sure many of you know what this is, but essentially all it is is by just enabling this guy up here on every EQ, it's gonna be the same. I'm just using this since it's uh, the most simple and basic one you could possibly use. And basically just rolling off however much I feel I need to roll off in order for it to start feeling like it's almost underwater. So really what's happening is I'm just rolling off all of those highs. And as a result, it's going to push things down a little bit. Now, the reason I used it here is because I wanted the vocal to stand out. What I want to show you is what happens if I actually get rid of this. So if I go into my automation here, um, I can go ahead and remove the automation. So basically I'm going to keep this bypassed and notice with the vocal and the guitar, notice the difference here. Growing up here in paradise. Okay, I'm gonna play it back one more time, this time with that enabled. Growing up here in paradise. Now what this is doing is allowing the vocal to stand out quite a bit more because it's no longer competing with the guitar in this particular case. Now, what I end up doing, if you actually look at it here, is I end up removing it again in the chorus. And the reason is because on the chorus, I want it to feel like everything opens up and all of a sudden it's a little bit brighter and whatnot. So let's, let me just show you getting you back into that. I think it's time that we go, go, go. So I have the lead vocal muted there uh, so you can really hear the guitar, but you can tell it opens up and all of a sudden you get that brightness, a little bit more of the shimmer on this electric guitar. Now, just so you guys know, this is the production session. This is not the mix session. This was a choice that I made during the production phase because this is specifically how I wanted this to sound. So I actually did the mix in a completely different session. And if you like this track as we're listening to it, this song is gonna be dropped as a single on Spotify September 24th. I got a pre-save link down below, by the way. Let me show you where else I use this because this is not the only place that I used it. I use this really kind of all over. The next place I use this is on these percussion moments here. I wanna show you what these percussion uh, parts sound like uh, without any sort of filtering happening. This is what this sounds like here that we're gonna be listening to. Okay, so this nice kind of auxiliary type percussion. Here's what it sounds like once you actually apply these uh, the filter, the high pass, the low pass filter. So obviously, again, same thing. It starts scooping off all of the all the highs and stuff. It's it feels a little more muted, like a little more underwater. And if we throw this in the context of the entire track, I'm going to take the vocals off just so we can really pay attention to the instrumental. Here's what we got. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what would happen if they were not filtered is it would sound like this. So obviously it stands out quite a bit more. Is that bad or is that wrong? Absolutely not. You can kind of go through it however you want to do it. This is a creative decision. But for me personally, I wanted the percussion, the guitar to kind of feel like it was pushed down a little bit more. It was a little more underwater. This is again, not even the only place that I use this. I use this again a little bit later here. It's on the bridge here. We had this little moment where everything comes down. It sounds a bit like this. So really all of this percussion here that I've got going on is pretty much all filtered out. Here's what this sounds like if I were just to solo out all of this percussion that we've got going here. Get, look at the EQs here. One, two, three, four, five, six different times on these instruments that I'm rolling stuff off on this one here. It's more of a shelf. It's not a hard, uh, hard filter, but you can see I'm rolling all that off and that is allowing this to give it that underwater kind of feel, which sounds like this in the context of the entire track. Okay, cool. So I got it there going on. <laughs> That's not even the only place here. I have it on this piano part here. Let's listen to this piano part. I'm using this the movement plugin too on there. It's really cool. But um, here's with no EQ on it. With EQ. So it's, it's not quite as aggressive because the, the piano already had a little bit of a muted tone to it. But then I do it on the vocals. You've got this on cloud nine thing going on here. And then notice what happens here. And if I open up my automation, you can see, boom, we have a filter. So I'm using this literally all over the place. Now, this is not the only way you can do this. You can do this on the master. You could literally do this on an entire track. I have a track where um, the whole intro is like opening up and I do this crazy stutter effect where then it does the opposite way. All the highs are rolled off and that automates itself up and it opens up, but then it ends up cutting out all the lows. And so you can do the same thing where if I just throw up an EQ here on the master here, um, we could do the same thing where I could just uh, obviously you can roll off everything on the top there, which is including my voice obviously right now, but you could do the same thing on the bottom. You can roll off everything on the bottom by doing a uh, high pass filter. Okay. And so by doing that, obviously my voice, you can hear all the lows disappear on my voice, but I could do this on the master bus and I could have this as an effect where it could be like this. <laughs> Obviously you can uh, automate that whole thing so then it opens up over time if you want to. So this is not just using the one filter, it's using either filter. You can do this on individual tracks, you can do this on buses, you can do this on the master bus. The ways in which you can use this to manipulate sound is enormous. Is this a simple trick? Yes, it's a simple trick. Is it extremely powerful? Yes, it's extremely powerful. I hope this video helped you guys. If you guys want to take a really huge step in your own productions and really take a systemized approach to learning, I have an entire course, Producer Accelerator. You can check that out, link down in the description below, but we'll see you in the next one.